Chapter 33. As Jorgen appeared on the hollow screen, my heart leapt and I wanted so badly to hyperjump to him. It was incredibly frustrating to stand there, ghostly, and have to watch as the ships slowly moved into position to start killing one another. We can escape this pain, Chad thought to me. We decided otherwise, I said to him. That's why we returned to the somewhere. I made this decision. So did you. I, he said to me, I, I'm too weak, Spencer. Far too weak. I can't handle this. I can't watch it. By being part of me, he'd taken on some of my memories, my time with my friends, my love of them, and my family. Scud, I hadn't anticipated what that might do to him. A creature who had abandoned all attachments, now suddenly thrust into a universe full of them. The air started to warp around me, the cytonic me, not this physical one. But I was drugged, and that warping, that worked? Why now? It wasn't centered on me, though. It was centered on my double image, the Delver that stood beside me. Because of the pain, I realized, suddenly some things started to make sense. Specifically, I understood the warping had happened every time I thought my friends were in danger. I had figured out before that the warping effect had come from Chet, but I hadn't realized why. I felt the emotions, but he was the one who couldn't control his sense of loss. All of that, the times when buildings had vanished and cups had teleported away, that hadn't been my pain, but his. His fear of being subjected to loss again. I tried to fight off that panic, tried to soothe him. Things weren't that bad. I'm in the center of the enemy's fortress, I reminded, or I thought to him. This could be a good situation. How many generals would have loved to have their best soldier hidden among the enemy command structure, watching, listening, preparing? We can be of use, I told him. Watch, we can protect them. We can make a difference. In return, he showed me the nowhere again, that inviting peacefulness, tranquility, lies. I knew it to be lies. The Delvers pretended to not have pain, but I had felt it right beneath the surface. The nowhere wasn't peace. It was the illusion of peace. Deep down, to my core, my soul understood that, and I'd already made this decision. Thank you, I thought to Chet, for showing me this. But you won't take it, he asked, faint. No. Instead, I needed to find a way to help. I turned my attention to the hollow screen, ignoring my body, which had been mumbling and shaking as my cytonic self interacted. I am Admiral of the Fleet Jorgen Waite, he said from the screen, Delegated High Commander of the Defiant Coalition of Planets. Where is Winsick? Winsick is dead, Braid replied. I'm in control now. You may call me Braid. Tell me, Admiral. You say you've come here on a rescue mission, but we're not holding anyone worthy of your attention. We know Spencer is there, Jorgen said. We've tracked her to your location. Spencer, Braid said. You mean the assassin? I sighed as Braid waved for one of her assistants to project something for Jorgen, an impressively well-framed video of me smashing Winsick's crab body with a crowbar. They shot it carefully enough that none of their soldiers were in view, but Winsick's still smoking and broken exosuit was in the background. Dang, I'd known she would use this, but I hadn't expected her to show it to Jorgen. On the view screen, he recoiled as if slapped. Well, I couldn't blame him. The way this looked, I would have assumed the worst about me as well. The air started to warp again, and I tried to reach out to Jorgen, pressing my mind toward his. I'm sorry, I sent him, trying to present an image of myself as innocent. I felt nothing in return. My powers were still being inhibited, either by the drugs or the tannics, or both. Worse, the moment I started, an aide rushed up to Braid. Excuse me, Admiral, Braid said, and temporarily cut the communication to Jorgen. She looked to the aide. What? We detected a weak cytonic signal, the aide said, reaching out toward the enemy. We couldn't pinpoint the slug behind it. Kill five of them at random, Braid said. Yes, sir. Braid looked to my body. We know if an unauthorized cytonic communication leaves the station, Spencer. If the slugs contact you, you'd best tell them to stay silent. But, I cried, and my body sat up and said the word out loud. Then I felt them die, screaming in pain as the boxes heated up and fried the poor creatures inside. None, none were doom slug. I thought she was among, still among them somewhere. Alongside my fury, I felt Chet's panic return. I clamped down on it. No, instead I glared at Braid and seethed. I was going to kill her. I'd find a way. Braid restored the communication. I'm sorry, Admiral Waite, she said. We have your pilot in custody and would be willing to discuss terms regarding her punishment. But you have to accept that her assassinating the head of our government means we will continue to hold her. I don't accept that, he said. You've been prosecuting an unjust war on our people for generations. We have to fight back however we can, and Spencer Nightshade isn't the only captive we're here to rescue. Braid cocked her head. Who else? Our coalition, Jorgen said, includes three planets so far, but four species. Humans, Braid said, Erdile, Kitson, 
and tanks, he finished. By the vote of our league, we granted them citizenship. You made the slugs citizens, Braid said, laughing. Even I was a little surprised at that. Then again, the more time I spent around the creatures, the more I realized they were intelligent, even if their intelligence didn't work the way mine did. Doomslug was absolutely a person, not a pet. By your own records, Jorgen said, you hold some 30,000 of these enslaved intelligent beings on this platform. We have come to liberate them. Ah, yes, Braid said, liberate our hyperdrives for your own use. Clever, granting them legal status in an attempt to provide a moral justification. But let's be honest with one another. Your intentions are the same as if you were raiding our acclivity stone. Think what you want, he said. Give us Spencer and the Tanix and we'll withdraw. I was barely listening. 30,000 slugs? Captive here? I'd sensed a large number of them earlier, but that many? Based on what I remembered of their, our estimations of the superiority's numbers, that would be a quarter to a third of all their Tanix. It was a daunting number, but actually not that many to serve, a hundred, serve the hundreds of planets in the superiority. It was no wonder, then, that many lesser worlds often had to suffer long waits for transports to ferry their people from planet to, pal to planet. Almost all of those slugs would be serving governments, militaries, or trade activities, each one carefully monitored by the superiority. Sure, we could rescue the 30,000 slugs here, but what about the other 80,000 enslaved all across the many star systems of the superiority? Start with what you can do right now, I thought. That was how you approached any problem. I couldn't help the slugs unless we won this fight. And I couldn't help my friends win this fight while I was a ghost or whatever. I needed to return to my body and restore my powers. And based on the way Braid reacted, whenever that doctor used a syringe, I started to have the beginnings of an idea. You're demanding our surrender, Braid continued to Jorgen, still sounding amused. Have you seen the size of our respective military forces? You should be begging me for mercy. You're the one who called me, Jorgen said to her, and whatever the numbers say, I think will surprise you. Looking forward to it, Braid said. Thank you for gathering together here so I can annihilate you. She gestured, cutting the feed, then immediately stalked over to her aides. They're after the hyperdrives and the comm slugs. Idiot didn't even realize he should keep his objectives hidden. What can we do? Don't let any of their forces slip through to Evensong, one of them offered. The larger platform, after all, was the one that held the slugs. Not in habitats, but boxes. Not good enough, Braid said. Bring up the installation commander. A moment later, a red-skinned Dion appeared on the holoscreen and saluted. Commander, Braid said, institute a full lockdown of all the hyperdrives on Evensong. Very well, sir, the Dion said. What level of authority? Admiral elite or higher in rank, she said, requiring biometrics to unlock. Sir, the Dion said, each Tanix will be fully secured in its own box, but with our systems on full lockdown, we won't be able to unlock the systems if I need to. Of course you won't, Braid said. That's the point. This way, the enemy can't torture you to give them what they want. Sir, the Dion said, saluting again, and obviously not liking the prospect of torture. I'm instituting the lockdown now. What if the what of the inhibitors and the communications Tanix? We need the inhibitors active, she said, and I assume the communications tanics are facilitating comms from around the superiority? Hundreds of thousands of them a second, sir, they said. Our primary duty is to keep them all up and running. A full lockdown would cut it off. Leave it up for now, Braid said. Just make sure no one can get those hyperdrives. Without them, there's little chance of the enemy winning here, even if they sneak past our forces. It's done, sir, the Dion said. Installation shield is fully up as well. Braid turned away as the screen went dark. I was learning good information, but how could I get it to Jorgen and the others? If I tried, I'd either reveal that I had my powers or make them think a slug was going rogue and lead to the execution of more innocent beings. Sir, said a reptilian Tanasi in a stark white military uniform, look at this. Braid walked over. She had a lot more Tanasi on her staff than other superiority officials I'd seen. It seemed to me that many thought the Tanasi were too aggressive, too potentially dangerous, despite being one of the founding species of the superiority. There was a story there, I suspected. Their starfighters are flying in pairs, the Tenassi said, and at least one of the two carries an inhibitor. Our intel had guessed they didn't have access to this many, but that's been proven wrong. So there's no easy win here, Braid said. She leaned forward, studying the telegraphic map. They have only a single capital ship named Defiant after their people. They're going to work overly hard to protect it. Are you certain, sir? The Tenassi said. I've studied the wisdom of the great warriors of human culture, Braid replied. I know what I'm doing. They're going to make mistakes protecting that flagship. We should keep up the pressure on it. That leads to our victory. Yes, sir. The Tenassi paused, looking at to some of his companions. 
some of her companions. Finally, she continued, Sir, I fear I grow glutens, but must ask, will we really summon Delvers for this fight? Every time we've tried that in the past, Braid said, it's been one variety of disaster or another, so I understand your hesitance, Admiral Cage. Still, they are, they are our best path to dominion, to dom dom domination in the galaxy. She looked to my body. We'll only call on them in an emergency. For now, let's do our utmost to crush these insurgents on our own. With that, Braid and her staff turned their attention to guiding the initial engagements of the battle. I hovered over to my body. Being a ghost offered me some advantages, but I didn't want to stay like this forever. Could I figure out how to get back into my body when I needed to? As I stepped closer, I sensed my body more strongly. I was able to feel my fingers, for example, and curl them. Yes, I was still tethered to my physical form, and the drugs in my system still inhibited me. On one hand, that was good. It felt like if I drew too close, I'd get pulled right back in. At my side, Chet watched the initial classes, clashes on the follow screen, and I could feel his anxiety rising. The air warped. Chet, I whispered, it's all right. Calm. Be calm. I don't know if I can be. You can, I said. Trust me on this. We'll get out of this. My soothing tone helped ease his panic, and the warping stopped. I decided not to return to my body yet. First, I needed to plan.